Yo, so today we are second last day into our six day audio file giveaway event that we're doing. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check the description below and check the uh, pinned comment section below. I will link everything there, but you can enter every single time up to four chances per video, up to 24 chances total. So make sure to check out all the videos that we're running this promotion on, but we're running a big giveaway on this channel. And today we're gonna be giving away something especially special. Today we're gonna be giving away one of our first class D best award amplifier winners. That's a long sentence or phrase. But today we're looking at the Stark Audio 84 and we're giving this away, yes. And this is also named something like the Stark Audio AD 4.320, something like that. But we're just gonna call it AD4 because who's coming up with these names? It's getting hella confusing. Now, this is a class D amplifier. And before we start, let's make the one thing clear. I am not a fan of class D amplifiers. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend and be pretentious to you and say that I think class D amplifiers are great. Because in general, right? The accumulative experience I've had with class D amplifiers from very expensive to very cheap, all of them hasn't been 100% positive. I've never sat down and listened to a class D amplifier and thought, yes, every dollar I would spend on this is worth it. Never happens, never happens. In fact, I don't think I've bought a single class D amplifier with my own money. Certainly, there are class D amplifiers that are good sounding and have gotten good, but again, it's just not my sound, it's just not my thing. But today, that may have changed. Now, not 100%, just hold up, not 100%, but I think today I have a class D amplifier that suits my taste closest to what I actually like and what I hear in music, and that is the Stark Audio 84. Now, let's Talk about the price point first. The price point of this is $1,499. $1,500 US dollars. That is very affordable for a class D amplifier of this caliber. Now, let's face it. When you buy a class D amplifier, you're buying it for a lot of power, right? That's what a lot of class D amplifiers are good for. A lot of power, efficiency, doesn't overheat and all that stuff. So let's look at the power rating. 225 watts per channel at eight ohms for four channel output. We'll talk about that in a minute. 320 watts per channel at four ohms at four channels output. 430 watts RMS at four ohms for two channel output. 650 watts output at two ohms for two channel output. Now, see how I mentioned four channel? This can be a four channel amplifier. Essentially, there's two amplifiers in here and they can be bridged for two channel use or three channel use or four channel use. So if you ever decide to have like a little mini home theater and add a center channel, then you can run it for three channels or you can run it for four channels if you want to use it and incorporate it in a larger home theater setting. Or if you're just running them for stereo, you can run it for two channel. And yes, at two channel, you get more output power. Yep. And for the amount of money you pay, this singly beats in terms of the wattage amount you get per dollar. It is incredible value. But that's not what made me get this amplifier. You know me. For me, sound is what's most important. Now, when they asked me to review this, I've never heard of Stark Audio before. I'm not gonna sit here and be pretentious and tell you that I've heard of Stark Audio before. I've never have heard of Stark Audio. I've never heard their stuff. So I was intrigued. However, I was also like, eh, class D amplifiers, you know, what modules do you guys use? And this is where things changed. For the better, you know, took a very steep turn. If their answer was we use ice modules, purify module, you know, I don't know, like 
every other modules out there, Hypex module. I've heard those modules and for the most part, I appreciate the sound, I appreciate what it does. Yes, it can sound great, but it's just not my sound, it's just not my thing. So I was going to politely decline until they told me that they actually designed their modules themselves. So technically, this is the only module that is not in the mass market of every other Class D amplifiers out there. This is their own module. So I opened up the unit to show you guys here. So you can see the modules that they made. These are the two modules. You can see the big capacitors here, Wima capacitors, so good parts here. And you can already also see that you can switch the region, depend voltage depending on the region you're in. You can see two big toroidal transformers here, big chunky tor toroidal transformers. Wow, what a work of art. What a work of art. From my understanding, even PS Audio doesn't make their own module. They used ICE modules. And PS Audio is a big company. So I was pretty surprised because a lot of companies don't have the capability or the resources to make their own Class D module. But Stark Audio has done that. So I was immediately impressed just by that. So the next question I asked them was, what was their goal design? What was their intentions of making this amplifier? And this was important to me for a few reasons. Number one, it's important to me because every Class D amplifiers out there has the same design goal, right? All the modules say the same thing, right? Class D amplifier that no longer sounds like a Class D amplifier. A Class D amplifier that outputs the most power. The Class D amplifier that has the cleanest sound, lowest distortion, clearest background noise. Those things are great. But for me, musicality is what comes first. Great. I love low distortion just like any of you. I love, you know, lower noise floor, absolutely. However, what does that mean to me if the sound signature is not what I like in my system? So I asked them this question and if the answer was the same as every other Class D module, I would have had big doubts that they can achieve better than Purify, better than Hypex, better than, you know, ICE modules. Because those, those have been around and those were designed by great engineers as well. But their, their answer was actually entirely different. Their answer was actually this. They said, we designed this module to sound like more of a tube amplifier, more forgiving, warmer sound characteristic, something that has musicality and soul to the sound. So their design was not necessarily to make a Class D amplifier not sound like a Class D amplifier, but make it sound musical to their ears. And of course, they did the measurements as well as any engineer should to make sure the measurements were in the acceptable range but they also made sure that the sound they get out of it was all done through listening, tuning, and all that good stuff that, in my opinion, should be essential. Listening, tuning by an engineer should be essential. So I was immediately happy because it fit, it fit the bill, $1,500. So I brought it in. Now, I do have to be honest, honest with you guys. When I brought it in, a lot of stuff come in here all the time. I don't necessarily always look at the pricing um, and remember them. I'm sure when I agreed, I looked at the pricing and I was like, yep, that's something that my, my viewers uh, would be interested in. But that escaped my mind when I hooked these up for the first time. When I first hooked them up, what I was looking for was that warm characteristic that they were talking about. Because let's face it, if I heard it and it didn't have that warm characteristic that they were talking about, then I was just not interested in just even making a video about it. So I'll probably send it back. But to my surprise, it actually had that warm characteristic. And the next thing I noticed took me to a different uh, set of happy zone. You know, it gave me a smile on my face. And that was when I sat down and listened to it, the sound was not two dimensional. It was three dimensional. So a lot of the problem I have with Class D amplifier for me is not only that in you know, a glassy top end sometimes can you know depending on the system emit, but also that 2D sound that I get from Class D amplifiers. 
You see, I'm more used to tube amplifiers and stuff that has three-dimensional sound. You know, remember I used to own a all-horn system, right? With all tube amplifiers, all tube gear, and stuff like that. So I'm very used to that three-dimensionality and I do look for those three-dimensional sound stage. To me, that's the most real. It takes me to an emotional place. Well, this amplifier actually had three-dimensionality and not the two-dimensionality that I get from Class D amplifiers. So that surprised me. Now, when I called them next, I asked them, well, how much are these again? And they told me $1,500. To give you a very, very firm answer of how good of a value this is, I asked them this question word for word. Cost, right? $1,500 cost. You're talking about cost. And they said, no, that, that's what we sell it for. And I said, are you kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me? The power rating is already impressive. This, is, this thing is gonna drive almost anything, right? I, this is probably gonna drive like the old Apogees for that matter. But you know, these will drive magnet pads, no problem. No problem, Not a, it won't even break a sweat yet because it's stable down to two ohms it has a two ohm rating of 650 watts right so it's, it's incredible amount of power very stable but it sounds great it sounds three-dimensional it has a sound stage that i can call a sound stage now let's face it it's not gonna replace a tube amplifier it's not going to have a holographic sound stage that surrounds you like a tube amplifier does but it does have the warmth and body to the sound of a tube amplifier with sound stage that's three-dimensional, as three-dimensional as I've ever heard a Class D amplifier sound before. It's getting close to, you know, I would say it's even more sound stage than Class AB designs like Hegel, Name, um, what other names can I put out there? You know, it certainly, for me, I'll say this right off, to me it sounds better than PS Audio, to me it sounds better than my NADC298 that I love. And we'll talk about the NADC-298 for a bit. NADC-298 is a great amplifier. And there's no replacing that. This amplifier is not going to replace that. That amplifier uses the Purify module. The Purify module is the lowest distortion, what I talked to you about with Class D modules. It achieves those things. And I think it did it to a very, very high standard. And I'll link to my review of the NADC-298 that I did for Soundstage in the link description below for you to check out as well. But that amplifier serves a different purpose. For me, that's a good tool because it doesn't really have a sound signature of its own. For me, that is the closest an amplifier is going to get to a non-sound signature input-output kind of sound. This Stark Audio is different. This Stark Audio has a sound signature, it has character, it is something that you put into your system to synergize with the rest of your system because you like the sound. And it has class D benefits, it does. It does run cool, it, it is efficient, it outputs a lot of power, and there is great bottom emphasis because it's a class D character. It has very good, I'm sure it has a very good damping factor, I just don't know it up on top of my head. So it has very good bass control, it has very good grip in the bottom end, and what you would expect from a Class D amplifier uh, when it comes to bass, right? Bass is a very good factor when it comes to Class D amplifiers. Now the mid-range and the high frequency is the delicate parts that usually Class D amplifiers fail to please my taste. This does. The mid-range is luscious, warm, Almost sometimes I mistake it for a, a tube amplifier, right? The high frequency is extended, airy. Now I can imagine that if you put this up with a very already bright sounding speaker, right? Like let's say full cal, stuff that's a little bit more tilted in the brighter frequencies, full cal, um, clips, RP600M and stuff like that, then yeah. I can see how this can uh, sound bright as well. But that's more speaking to the speakers rather than this amplifier. This amplifier does have extended highs. It's not tilted in the highs, it's extended 
has very good detail and micro detail retrieval. The micro and macro details are excellent on this unit. You hear all the little nuances as you would from a class A or class AB design. And putting it up against the NADC 298's high frequency, I definitely enjoy the stock audios a little bit more easy going yet full sounding high frequency. And I never thought I would say this, but the NADC 298 in comparison does have a little bit of a more leaner presentation overall, at least with the you know stuff that I'm using right now. Now, let's go over my system a little bit because that's important. Because this is a standalone amplifier, you do need a preamplifier, a DAC, a se separates, right? So let's put, put it into context. Stuff that I've been using. I've been using the Solens Faber Electamator, which is a $10,000 Italian speaker. And these speakers I know very, very well because I've heard them a lot of times in my previous workplace. These were one of my favorite speakers. Now I'm also using the Holo Audio Serene preamplifier. That's a new preamplifier they have. And that sounds great as well. And I also have the Holo Audio Made DAC. Now you may say this is overkill for a $1,500 amplifier, but in my opinion, it really does play to this caliber. And also the gear I'm using right now is something that I'm personally very, very familiar with. It's stuff that I've been using for a long time or stuff that I've heard a many dozen times before actually reviewing anything. So that I can sit down and actually evaluate what the amplifier brings to the table instead of you know hearing the entire system as a whole. So the differences can be attributed to the amplifier itself. And I have to say, it sounds incredible. It outputs a lot of power. It checks off a lot of boxes for me um, in terms of what I would own as an amplifier. In fact, I own two of these for home theater and also for stereo as well. And I would highly recommend this amplifier to anyone. Not just budget audiophiles that's looking for a great amplifier solution, but even for someone that's looking for a, let's say under $5,000 amplifier with a lot of um, driving capability to drive their KEF speakers, um, you know, their, you know, Dynaudio speakers, wh whatever it may be, MagnaPan speakers, something that you need a lot of, you know, power, yet you want great sound quality. To me, that was what's lacking in this market, unless you, you know, decide to spend a fortune on like Paris Sound or, you know, PS Audio or whatever it may be. Um, but for $1,500, you can practically drive anything with this amplifier and it sounds as great as you know really any of the amplifiers out there uh, around five thousand dollar price point if you put a head to toe with paris sound for example uh ps audio you know denifrips you know kinky studio i think it would go head to head to head like really really close yes some may prefer one over the other for certain qualities but it stands on its own when I compare this with any of the units that I've had in here before. And I am just as skeptical as you when it comes to these things. So I was thinking to myself, where could, have, where could they have possibly cut down on the cost? And I really struggled to find anything. I mean, the internals as you have looked, looks amazing. Two toroidal transformers, essentially two amplifiers in there. And the chassis design is nice and great, you know, minimalistic, but you know, what an amplifier should look like, you know, pretty classy in my opinion. And the binding post is high grade binding post, beryllium binding post, has balanced inputs, you know, RCA inputs. So I really don't have anything to nitpick on this. And 100%, 100%, this is probably one of the best. And I've never thought I would say this to a class D amplifier, but possibly the best um, deserving best award I have ever given out on this channel. Now, every best award winners deserve it. Every one of those products are excellent, but probably this is the best value to date when it comes to me giving out a best award to a product. So enough said, thank you for watching this video. If this video was helpful to you, please click that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one.